Hey everybody, welcome to Cincinnati Real Producers Podcast, powered by Nextdoor Photos. I'm Patrick Braddock, owner and publisher of Cincinnati Real Producers. And I'm Daniel Ziegler, owner of Nextdoor Photos. Every week, we're getting to know Cincinnati's top realtors. Our goal is to elevate and inspire the real estate community throughout greater Cincinnati. Today, we have Michelle Mamo, the team lead for the Dwell Well Group brokered by eXp Realty. Michelle is in her 22nd year selling real estate, and her career sales volume is over $1 billion. In 2023 alone, her team's volume was over $50 million. Michelle has received the Circle of Excellence Award at the Realtor Alliance of Greater Cincinnati and the Icon Award at eXp numerous times. She has also been in the top 1% of agents across the country for 22 years. Welcome to the show, Michelle Mamo. Welcome. That kind of goes. Flows, right? Gosh. Welcome to the show, Michelle Namo. Right? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> $1 billion. Wow. I think that's the first force on the show here. It is. That's, I mean, and you, we, we were talking off off camera and off, off uh, air earlier about you're not one for, we're just going to d- dive right into it. You're not one for the awards and accolades. It's all about the clients and mm-hmm. Um, that's such a testament to your success, I feel like, right? Like, you know, when you, and and as a top agent like yourself too, when you're, when you're able to put yourself second for your client, great things are going to happen to your business. And it's the service that you provide is there's no reason why, or there's no surprise as to why you've done over a billion dollars. That's congratulations. Thank you. That's really wonderful. Absolutely. Thank you. It's It's amazing. It's a it's become a lifestyle, right? If yeah. It's something I've been passionate about and it just, I don't know where 20, you know, two years went, but Amazing. It, it's, you know, there's always the ups and downs and highs and lows, but overall it's been a career that, you know, I'm proud of, I've enjoyed and I've met so many great people that I, you know, I wouldn't change that part of it. People think, oh, are you just working? Why do you need to keep working? You know, don't you make enough money? That kind of thing. It's mm-hmm. not about that. Mm-hmm. You know, it's really. And I think it's so evident talking to you. You know, we talked about this earlier too. How, you know, you're you're introducing the team. You're introducing aspects of what makes the train go, and not not just yourself. Mm-hmm. And I like that's. I don't know. Well, thank you're, you. You're a special realtor. <laughs> thank you. You're special. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you can tell you just genuinely enjoy yeah. the job. I you do. enjoy what you do, yeah. and it seems I, to come really naturally to you. I enjoy relationships. You know, I mean. I would say, it's funny, I was talking about this the other day. We were talking about partnerships and and as I'm going through like the list of people, you know, that I've met, you know, in Cincinnati from just other companies, I'm that person. Like I just love other agents and top producers and doing deals with them and collaborations and it just it just gets me going. I mean, I could do it all day long. That's awesome. And that's one of my favorite things. My number one source of business is other agent referrals, and I'm super proud of that. You should be. It's incredible. So, w- what percentage would you say are other agent referrals from the area, or because I know you have like a national pool too, like mm-hmm. you've you've built relationships all over the country. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, is that for anybody who doesn't know anything about the Great Wall of China that is the Ohio <laughs> River? Yes. you've really been a catalyst of knocking down that wall. Yeah. Um, and it's it's a testament to probably why those relationships are are so strong for you because people can rely on on somebody who's been doing it for twenty two years. Can you speak to the can you speak to that um, that relational referral side as as far as your business is concerned on both sides of the, the river? The Great Wall of Yeah, the Great Wall of Ohio, <laughs> of Ohio. <laughs> Kentucky that does exist. Yes, um, it's it's funny because it wasn't intentional i mean i did not grow up in cincinnati Mm -hmm. and i and i you know or northern kentucky you know for that matter right so for me it was really great to kind of get to know all areas you know within the city so when i was first here and starting like a really a larger team i'm like where do i want to be i said i feel like i've had an office in every part of the city and i've kind of really just kind of moved back to Northern Kentucky and do the bulk of my business there um, because I do live there. And one of the things that I did 
was I said, you know, both areas are fantastic and really wanting to focus on, you know, Relo's getting that experience. So they didn't just get one experience Mm -hmm. just in Ohio and maybe they didn't bring them to Northern Kentucky and that kind of thing. So it's been a lot of fun just experimenting with that and just getting to know all of the different locations and like a lot of the agents that are just parts of those, you know, pieces. And what kind of just happened with this Kentucky location is it's very central because it's in Covington. It's right on the river. It's a really fun little like office. It's a, it's a sweet office. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's it's more cool than I am, I think. <laughs> um, you bring the cool. Oh, uh, right. yeah. <laughs> um, so I just kind of started doing a lot of tours for a lot of agents, you know, that are in Cincinnati and they only have their Ohio license. And it just kind of kept happening and they kept realizing, well, I can trust this person to take mm-hmm. care of my people. So I don't need to go and do, you know, onesie twosie deals. I know that they may want to look in both places. So we collaborate on how that works, you know, where they might land. And it's just been like an amazing, you know, time. And and for that matter, being like urban, like in Covington, there's also a lot of Kentucky agents who they don't even want to come down you know to covington or newport yeah so for me that has kind of been where that has occurred so it's on both sides of the river so i get you know referrals from people that maybe further south who say you know i'm in union i don't really want to go to covington i don't understand it you know they want to be in condo buildings i don't understand so i've really enjoyed it it's just been really fun so it's it's really great and your your location like you mentioned is is perfect yeah like it's you know to be to be on the ohio side in less than 30 seconds you know and then you can be anywhere in northern kentucky in just a few minutes it's beautiful ohio people aren't scared to come that far right 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 So go for it. Daniel's big on the early years. Yeah, the I love to talk years. about the you early do. years. Well, I like oh, to get to gosh. know our guests yeah, better. I like it go too. Back into yeah. time. I get into the business aspect. So this is when we feel old, Daniel. <laughs> I'm sorry, but That's it's okay. Intention. No, I love it. No, so you mentioned that you're not from Cincinnati, so that gets my mind curious as to where you are from. I know. Well, I actually grew up in. I'm kind of just a country girl. Um, I grew up in southern West Virginia. Really? In the hills. Okay. So I had like seven people in my grade school class. And Holy cow. Graduated with 42 people in my, oh my, my class. Yeah. Wow. So I left when I was like 20. Um, I had gotten a degree in uh, business management. It was actually printing management. I ended up going to D.C. Hmm. right out of college and worked for the treasury department for oh, really? 13 years wow so I'm really digging deep now yeah you know, I don't usually go back that far well, did you like living in dc i did did you it's a, i it's did it's kind of a unique city man it, it's, it's dc northern virginia so yeah. i was really already used to that you know i don't know where everybody dc maryland virginia mm-hmm. like yeah. that little you know triad and so I just, it was a fun time. I mean, and it was great. I attribute a lot of my leadership skills to being in the federal government. Some people might be like, really? But like, it wasn't really for me though. (laughs) We're not getting into that. (laughs) We're not going to go into politics, right? But they do a lot of good things too. There's, there's things like that, um, that happen. And, but I was always in love with real estate and it was funny because I bought a for sale by owner. So that's kind of how it started. Hmm. Because I met um, an agent, my agent, he basically said, it's okay. You know, he was super nice about it. And he then came to me later and he said, listen, like I'm starting a small brokerage and I'm thinking that you should just quit your job and you should come. No one quits the government. Right. right. I mean, come on. Especially like 13 years. You're like, there's, there's actually light at the end of the tunnel here for (laughs) retirement. (laughs) Everybody's like, what are you insane? Like, why would you do that? Like I was actually really had done pretty well and gotten to a point where, you know, people like sometimes retire and I'm, you know, it's pretty young, Uh but um, my son who actually works with me now, he's 25. And I guess he was like three when I got into the business Mm -hmm. But I said, you know, I'm going to do this thing. Well, this guy, you know, who was my broker is amazing. 
And he has a company now back in DC that's probably one of the top companies. There's like 5,000 people there. Oh, oh wow. And I was one of his like fourth or fifth people. Wow. So I got a lot from him, I have to say. You know, I have a lot of gratitude for that because he just, you know, it was like a system. And then you just kind of followed it. We were kind of small at the time and in order to, to grow, I had kind of grown so fast. I thought, well, let me, I want to experiment with like teams. Mm. So that's how I ended up going to Keller Williams. Mm. Um, and it was really hard because I, you know, it's always hard. That's this business. Sure. You know, and I told a younger agent the other day, I said, you know, just always value each place that you've been because it doesn't have to be hard breakups. You learn something and then you move on to something else. And I think we get stuck in that where mm -hmm. it's bad. And right. it right. isn't. It can be good. Yeah. You don't have to burn yeah. those bridges. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. so I, you know, did that and started a team and then I ended up moving out west, actually, yeah. to Utah for a couple of years. Okay. So I dropped everything and I did that and that was hard. And so I, when expansion teams weren't even cool. So I kept a business for thirteen years in DC when I lived away. That's fantastic. So I was pretty proud of that. that is they were rock stars. I was, you know, living out west. I'd go back and forth a little bit, um, and then ended up coming here to land. And I'm like, no, I'm not gonna go. <laughs> what to Cincinnati, the Midwest? <laughs> yeah, really. Where is that? And honestly, you know, God always knows the right thing to do. But anyway, he, you know. It was a tough time. I'm not going to lie. Like personally, there was a lot of tough things that were going on, but it was just amazing. You know, the things that came out of that, sure. just learning, could I really do this? You know, I knew I was successful, but can you just reinvent yourself mm -hmm. in another place? And people always, you know, that's hard. Mm -hmm. you know, people are always saying, oh, you can't do that. You're not from there. You're not. Right. And I'm a hard worker. I mean, I am a professed workaholic. And I am passionate about it. And I felt like I learned so much, you know, selling in DC, Virginia, because you got to be hustling or sure. you're not going to, there's a lot of people there. Um, so I, you know, just kind of did it. I said, I'm going to learn everything I can about Northern Kentucky, about Cincinnati, um, had a huge team, had learned so much from others. And I think that's where me knowing that the relationships were, they meant a lot to me because those people all helped me grow. Sure. Well, and I love the fact, I remember talking to you about that when we first met, like mm -hmm. I remember saying like, Michelle, it's, it's crazy that you want to start over again. Like it's so hard to get started in real estate and then you choose to, to have this team on the other side of the country when nobody else is doing that. And then you decide to move to a city you've never lived in before and you decide to start over again and do it again. I'm like, my head is about to explode when we first met because I'm like, nobody would want to do that more than once. Like it's, no, it's truly no. impressive. But I also love the fact that you have so many systems and ideals from all over the country that you brought here, you know, so that when the student becomes the teacher, now people are really leaning on you and then the relationships are getting stronger because of that. You yeah. know, like mm -hmm. I, I just think that having that outside vision that that can kind of put things in perspective for somebody who's probably been here their whole life and doesn't know any different, you know, like, wow, there could be a light bulb going off. You know, like, have you seen that in, in the 22 years that have you, like, well, especially when you moved to the Cincinnati area, have you seen that, um, that kind of switch in, in gears from, the student to the teacher aspect once yeah, you got business going? I have and you know, I I have to say this is for me. This year is I'm gonna call it I'm calling it Michelle two point I think. Awesome. Because I'm somebody who's very self aware, okay, also about you know, the things that I could do better from a leadership act activities and things like that. Because I am so passionate about the business, I'm always, you know, producing. Mm -hmm. You can't always be in production and be the best leader possible. Mm -hmm. So over the course of the last couple of years, that's been really, you know, a strategic thing for me. And I always tell, you know, everybody I'm working with, like, okay, you know, let's learn together. And I also, though, forget how much that I can provide. Sure. As far as like, you know, teaching somebody. 
because I think for me, I think it's a natural thing for me to always just, I don't know, I think bigger. Like if somebody says, here's my goals, I'm like, okay, I want your goal to be here. You know, I just, that's just the way that I think. So I think one of the things that's been really helpful is for me to become aware of how much that I can contribute sure. to somebody, you know, to help them and to also realize like, hey, it's okay to to say, you know, I'm really good at this. Right. You right. know, so this year it's one of those where we're going to go out and say, you know what, we actually really probably list houses better than almost anybody. There's probably a few handful of people that are really good at it, but we're one of them, mm -hmm. right? Where we just have like amazing services that people don't even realize that we do, you know, yeah. and that kind of thing. And I think that's where we've gotten like a lot of business. And also I like have some tools where I've trained a lot of agents in this area and they have really great teams of their own now and they are doing amazing things. And we have this whole thing where they come in and they can't unsee what I'm showing them <laughs> <laughs> about properties. Sure. It's yeah. like, if you take a tour in a property with me, I'm gonna show you a different way to look at it that most agents don't. And to kind of really look at what are you not giving the consumer? Mm -hmm. Because guess what, You know, even when things were crazy, everybody could could you know sell a house let's just say right. you know but when times get tough what's going to happen and also how much money did that consumer lose because that agent just didn't know mm -hmm. how much they could do to get extra for that client mm -hmm. cuz right. it's not about putting a sign in the yard so we staged every house even from the smallest to the biggest when the market was crazy yeah Oh my gosh. We did the same thing and did used all of our tools and all of our vendors to like help create the best, you know, experience mm -hmm. for our clients. And we continue to do that today. So all of a sudden we have all of the, this business, you know, all this listing business that's coming in. And I believe it's because of what we've done for them before. Sure. Well, absolutely. You know. No, I mean, there's no doubt about it. I think what what you do, there's a quote and I can't remember who said it. It was a probably a president or something what you do when no no i think it might have been well anyways what you do when no one's looking yes. um is is um really proof of your character and i think the same can be said of like what you do when things are easy like when the market was as crazy as it right. was that's proving your character and you know um what you're gonna do even you know when things are are easy is you're gonna do that much more when things are hard so it's i think it's incredible yeah, and I'm, definitely a testament to your I success. I am, I think, kind of switching that. You know, we were talking about the student teacher piece. Yeah, I've had to switch the pendulum in my head a little bit to say, you know, I want to share with more agents. I want to see more people, you know, succeed. There was a statistic that I saw on in Inman last week that said forty nine percent of agents sell fewer than five houses. And I, I believe it. I it blew my mind. Yeah. Like, I just don't think that way. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you can't live off of that. No. Like, that's not a career. Um, a lot of people have exited the business, you know, as it's gotten, you know, harder. Last year alone. Yeah. What was it? Um, Cincinnati has lost, like, what, 1,500 agents? Yeah. Just in our MLS? Like, that's yeah. crazy. Just because of one year of hard times. Right. So, and that's right. why we only advertise the top 500 agents. Because the majority of the work is done by people like yourself. So there's no reason for us to go outside of that and try mm -hmm. to find somebody who sells one house a year. So right. I mean, it's a testament. Right. So I think that's where, you know, I feel like, gosh, there's just so much that you can share and, you know, really make the world bigger and mm -hmm. expand it bigger. Um, and I've had people reach out to me from some of the places that I've lived and worked and they've said, hey, you know, come back and, you know, let's you know, dive into this. And I've been hesitant to do it because, you know, you don't want to be stretch yourself, you know, right. spread too thin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I've given up some things that were hard for me. Like, you know, like I've got now a professional stager that is working on our group now to help with that. As much as I love doing that type mm -hmm. of thing, you know, I can't be in the business all the time and sure. work on it. So I think I'm more excited about, you know, releasing some of those things and saying, you know, I want to share with more people right, yeah. and go back national, go back a little deeper in 
to Cincinnati, Northern Kentucky for those agents that really, really want to, I guess, ramp it up. Because sure. I consider myself sort of like a tornado. You just come in and if you want to get busy, just come hang out because you'll be busy. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, and for it's sure. hard because if you ramp up in Cincinnati, it's not the same as ramping up in Northern Kentucky. And it's a stone's throw over the river. So starting a business on one side of the river isn't necessarily starting a business on the other side. No, for sure. So the fact that you're able to do both is is so impressive. I like. I, it's just amazing to me. I, I we could have a class that we would have you host for agents to show up on just how to how to balance the two sides of of the the river because you're right. People people don't want to do both. You know, mm-hmm. they don't. They're afraid to go to the other side. Like, oh, there's too many agents in Cincinnati, or I don't know enough about northern kentucky you know and it's like yeah when you get uncomfortable and you dive into both then you know it's it's truly impressive so yeah, yeah. well not to mention the caliber of some of your listings um i have the privilege of having seen two of <laughs> yeah. the most outrageous and fantastic homes i've ever seen in person uh, and they were both your listings we don't have to talk about specifics but um but I think there is something to be said when that caliber of a listing is trusted to an agent. That says something. Absolutely. It says a lot. Well, thank you. Um, I have to say I'm very proud of that fact because I came from a high price point, you know, area. And you're like, okay, you know, how do you get started, especially in luxury? Um, and I definitely consider myself a luxury listing agent. Mm-hmm. I don't want to say I'm just that because I'm not or else right. I wouldn't be able to feed my family, right? Because sure. it it's not like those sell the fastest, you know, right. in an area in the Midwest. Right. Sure. Um, we're not in New York City. Right. 100%. <laughs> so, I and there's a difference too in Cincinnati and Ohio mm-hmm. and Northern Kentucky. You know, a lot of people think it's the same and there's definitely a significant difference in how many people are going to come look at a high end listing, you know, in Northern Kentucky. So um, it's been it's been something I'm super passionate about, but I also have the patience, mm. I think, to to do it and can walk those people through how this is going to go. Sure, because it's not a fast; it's, a, it's more of a marathon in terms of luxury here. Right. Oh yeah, it's definitely gonna take some patience. That's for sure. Yeah, but that's uh, some good photos. <laughs> good photos patience and <clears throat> other just ideas constantly it yeah. can't just be like hey you know it might not sell in three months now what are we going to do next mm-hmm. so there has to be that yeah well and that goes back to some of your systems and the the way that you list homes that you were talking about and i don't know if you want to share all of your trade secrets on a podcast mm. but if there's anything that you would like to aside from i know staging is a huge piece of it and I've, I was amazed with what you did with, you know, some of the listings that I've seen you list um, as far as that goes. But what else is there that you'd be willing to share? On I'm listeners? willing to share everything. Honestly, I, I am a person that believes in like that, you know, I'll share it. I uh-huh. mean, I am all about, I think this year I'm going to start doing some workshops you know, so that agents can come so that we can talk about just listing, mm. like from walking into the door, everything that they're looking at, what contractors you should have, what's going to bring you the most money, you know, for your client, because it's not always what people think. Right. right. And what I have found interesting is that a lot of agents actually don't even understand that at all. Hmm. Like they're, you know, they understand how to list a house. But then there's that next level list of house, Mm -hmm. the secret, you know, to doing things differently, like because not everything is going to bring the same return. And we've, you know, from a history of doing this because we do a house, whether it's 200,000 or, you know, 2 million, we do that same. Everybody deserves the same thing. Everybody deserves. We call it everybody deserves to live well, you know, to have their house shown like it should be. I love that. Um, To get the most money in their pocket. So I think I'm excited about doing that. I want to, I want in on that. I'm not even an agent. I want to, I want to be a part of that. Yeah. So from staging to having the right contractors to having the right alignment of what that budget looks like, because it's just small tweaks like here and there. 
Um, and it doesn't always have to be crazy. People are like, oh my gosh, like they're not going to spend any money. Mm -hmm. Well, they will if you discuss it with them the right way. Right. You know, and help them and provide those resources. I mean, one thing that I did that I loved was when my kids were younger and I try to find them. I'm, it's a little harder when I get older, but I said, I want to train good humans, right? I want to train my son and I'm so proud of him now because you know, I'll get calls from clients all the time and like, oh my gosh, that was such a nice young man. And I'm thinking, well, he's been, since he's 14 years old, cutting grass, mulching him and his friends and teaching them how to speak to clients and to, you know, come from a servant leadership sort of, you know, position mm -hmm. of how to take care of people because that's what you need to do. And if you right. do that in life, you know, your pockets and your mind and your heart and everything's always going to be full if you're just trying to do the right thing yeah and he's you know i'm just proud because that's still showing through that's awesome. oh absolutely jared's a fabulous young man so yeah. good job mom thank you <laughs> yeah. when you're exposed for 22 years to <laughs> the service industry that you've provided to yeah. it's kind of easy to follow in those footsteps too i would think mm -hmm. he's learned you know without even having to learn he just well and work, well, not to mention work ethic i mean yeah. well, he's true, seen but, how hard you work and he still wanted in <laughs> but here's what's funny he does but he also he's um so funny he's more of an engineering mind right i'm just like let me talk to more people <laughs> but he's a little mix of both but he um he works solely right now more on like the vendor side and managing all of the listings like oh. making sure that everything is like taken care of yeah and i love that because he he would prefer to continue to grow his business that way. And that's why we want to work with some other great agents because we know how to service them. We have access to all the contractors and all of the things. Mm -hmm. So he's can start a whole business on that as well, part of what we do. Yeah. Um, he does some showings and the other day he was out and he's like, okay, am I slowly becoming you? This is not <laughs> <laughs> No. <laughs> like you weren't supposed to notice. <laughs> this is not going to happen. <laughs> yeah. So. It's too so funny. to me. <laughs> right. Hilarious. Right. So I'm we should have had Jared on the business here. over when you want to take a break though, right? Oh, yeah. Know. What do they say? Real estate agents never quit. They just die. Like you're going to be in real estate for your whole life, no matter what, if you're successful at it. So. Well, yes, but you know what? If you do it the right way, and that's where the 2.0 part is. There it is. I don't want to die, you know, just sitting at the table you know talking yeah. about real estate i want to die by just helping other more agents yeah yeah leave a legacy and That's leave great. things that way to yeah. say you know what and if i die today i'll be like she really did you know impact my life and uh -huh. and showed me things you know that i didn't see before that's that's what i want to do yeah that's awesome that's awesome i think that you know we hear all this kind of conversation about um, you know, big tech companies, uh, the Z word, trying to uh, get rid of the need for agents, and and when there are agents like you taking it to the next level, that is that's irreplaceable. I think no matter what, agents are irre irreplaceable. But when you take it to the level of service that you do, there's no question. Yeah, I had a, a really serious conversation, and lately I've had several just because of everything going on, and you know, the real estate world regarding the lawsuits and everything, sure. and. You know, I don't, I'm not, I'm not scared about that. Like, and I think that if you're an agent, what you should be doing right now is asking yourself that question. Like, am I scared? And if I am, why? Because if you don't have a value add and, and a passion and mm -hmm. all of those things, then I think th that you're going to have a problem. You know, you're going to have a problem making a living. You're going to have a problem just you're going to be angry all the time. <laughs> like, it, but if you have the passion and you go and start collaborating, start learning, start figuring out what your value proposition really is, then you're not afraid. Mm -hmm. You're not afraid to know that they're, I'm going to get paid. I'm right. going to sell this. I'm going to, you know, always, you know, have a purpose. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what agents have to start asking themselves in this business right now yeah it's a very serious question and for sure. so for i feel really really good about where the future is going because i have that yeah and i've worked hard to 
establish that and figure that out and I know what it is. Right. I am not afraid to have a conversation with any client or seller and know that I can help them. Mm -hmm. Whereas I do think that there's, you know, a good amount of people that they're really not sure. They're telling them the same thing that everybody else is telling them. Right. So I think that's what I would recommend, you know, for those future people who want this to be their career. Right. That's awesome. Well, that is awesome. Well, speaking of advice, since you're already handing it out, before I ask you for some more advice, oh, we will, that's part of our segment. Oh. We love to ask for you your advice for new agents or um, buyers and sellers. But before we do that, um, we just want to thank Back to Back Ministries for letting us use their space here, this awesome podcast studio. Yeah. Um, Back to Back Ministries is a global nonprofit orphan care organization with their sights set on providing care for today and hope for every tomorrow. From Cincinnati, Ohio to Hyderabad, India, staff teams around the world are stepping into hard stories and choosing to stay. To learn more about the work Back to Back does, how you can get involved, and why a global team won't stop until every child is known and loved, visit backtoback.org today. And I have the pleasure of having seen Back to Back in action in nice. many of those places around the world, and uh, it is a fabulous organization, so highly recommend. But with that done, Michelle, I wanted to ask you, you were already kind of on this train with some advice for agents, but let's say there's um, a brand new agent um, who's new to the business. What uh, advice would you have for them given the current climate and what's going on in the market right now? I mean, I, I think if you're a brand new agent, I've always said, you know, be, be a buyer's agent first. Find yourself um, a great team to be a part of where you can just be a sponge. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, listen and, you know, to anything and everything that that they're doing. Or if it's just another person or somebody, just make sure that you're aligning yourself with that. Because if you're alone, A, you're not gonna learn anything. Right. You know, I mean, I go back to those early, early days, you know, with the guy who taught me, you know, we do the same thing every day. Make sure that you've structured yourself you know, in that manner, mm -hmm. you know, if you do the same thing every day, you have to treat it like a job. Don't plan on coming in this business and thinking like, this is just a cakewalk. Right. It's a very difficult business mentally, sure. you know, mm -hmm. uh, physically, cause you need to set up a schedule for like taking care of yourself. Mm -hmm. So self care should be like a really good thing. If you start doing that and do it early, don't do it in the middle of the day. Mm -hmm. If you're an agent, um, so those are the things I think that you've really got to think about. Mm -hmm. Like, what's my plan going to be? Yeah. And if you start there, and that's what I did, do everything that they tell you to do and just keep doing it over and over for like two years. Right. And then I think you will always have a good career. Mm. Build those habits early. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, that's awesome. So what about, let's turn this around for buyers and sellers. What kind of advice would you give? You know, hopefully 2024 is looking a little better for real estate than 2023? Well, I think it's going to be interesting. I think that if you are a seller, you 100% should just get prepared. And we do a lot of early preparation. We're like, hey, let's meet now and I'll tell you the exact things to do to get your house ready mm -hmm. to sell and exactly how much more that you're going to make. Right. And let's talk about where you're going to go. Because that's the reason, right? No one right. knows where they're going to go. Right. But the key thing is, is if you do it and you time it right, you know, the way that interest rates are kind of, you know, coming down, you know, they're not going to go down to 3%, you know, or they're not going right. to, we're not going to see those historic lows. Um, but if everybody got that same mindset, then we would all be fine. I think if you're a buyer right now, getting out there sooner is better mm -hmm. because it's going to be, I think, competitive again till we can get those sellers, you know, going. Right. So, I mean, my advice is to not think about all that. Do what you need to do. But if you get with the right agent who truly, truly cares about what your needs are and mm -hmm. listens, you will be able to put together a really great plan to make it happen, whether it's three months or six months or next year, right? you know, do that. And make sure you call somebody and do that consultation. If you're unclear, don't be scared of it. Like do it because right. there's some great opportunities that are out there. You know, don't Absolutely. listen to the news all the time. <laughs> that's great advice right there. <laughs> I, stopped, the off. I stopped doing that a long time right. ago. Yeah, yeah. Right. That's been great for my mental health. Correct. Um, so how far in advance do you, like I'm sure there's 
all over the map, but on average, do you think when there's a client that you're working with who maybe has some things that, that you both agree that you should do for your house mm-hmm. to get it ready to sell, um, how soon uh, or how far out are you kind of looking at meeting with them and making a plan before actually even hitting the market? Oh, my gosh. I Honestly, I have to tell people, like, even if you're thinking about doing it next year, mm-hmm. like, let's do just a consultation and go over what that looks like, right? you know, and then we'll help you along the way. Here's yeah. some people that can give you, like, those estimates and, you know, if you feel like you can't afford to do that right now and just come up with that so that you're always engaging a year ahead if you can think that far in advance. Yeah, you can't always plan that far, but when you You can, can, that's really helpful. If you can, do that. Yeah. So those people that have been sitting on that fence for like a couple years, Mm -hmm. just get out there, you know, find someone. I mean, we're very no, we don't pressure people Mm -hmm. ever. This is about their life, about what they need to do and it will happen, right? You know, it's 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 finding that agent. Yeah. Like if you find somebody like myself who will be like that, that's great. And they're out there. Mm-hmm. It's just getting rid of the people that just want to churn and burn. Is right. what I call them. Yeah. You know, so if you sniff that out, go you know a far away from <laughs> that person. Right. Yeah. yeah. I love that you work on on your client's timeline. You know, yeah. and, and it's all about sometimes you have needs. to sometimes you have to do the hard thing though and push them. I, right. I felt like, you know, when things got a little bit crazy, I'm pretty conservative and I like to protect my clients, but I was finding that I also don't want to hurt them. Mm-hmm. So when I do consultations now, especially for buyers, you know, I'm like, listen, I'm gonna tell you this is what you're gonna need to do to win. It's not gonna feel good, but I also don't want you to lose every single time. Right. Mm-hmm. Right? That's smart. Yeah, awesome. setting up good expectations. Yeah. Well, not everybody's interested in setting a timeline with the client, too. You know, it's like, are you ready to buy? Or call me when you're ready to buy. You know, it's like, hey, a year out? Yeah, we'll still work with you. We'll figure something out. Like, yeah. I love that, you know, like, here's what you should be doing as we get closer to when you want to move to. Like, advice is, you know, is so key in this industry. Just like, everybody pretends to know a lot about real estate. <laughs> but that's why real estate agents are so important because nobody knows anything about real estate. <laughs> like, I, they they I see the tip of the that. iceberg and then they see Michelle underneath the water running around in 45 <laughs> different directions. You know, yep. like I say that all the time. You have all these people that, I mean, people love real estate. Let's be, yeah. Th- yeah. that's what they talk like about HGTV. all the time. You walk into a, a you know, a restaurant, you, anything, somebody's talking about real estate. But I tell clients the truth. You know, and I say, this might not feel good, and I'm going to just tell you, you know, and if there's an agent that you're talking to that's saying they absolute, absolutely know what's going on at certain given moments, the way that the market's been, they're lying. Yeah. Like, they don't know. They cannot predict the future. Yeah. Like, it's, right. you know. You're not dealing with God here, people. You're, no. <laughs> you, know. you just you have know. to, you know, make a plan as best we can and, yeah. like, you know, mm-hmm. move forward. Yeah. So. Well, and change is hard. So, like. Being able to have those conversations about, yeah, this is what we planned for, but we have to shift gears. You know, like being able to have that conversation, I think, is super key. And and having that open correspondence with your clients is, is really wonderful. Yeah, because somebody's going to be the one who gets caught at yeah. some point, right? Like if all of a sudden everything shuts down, because it does, yeah. you might, you know, I can specifically remember the listings that just got caught in that. Like mm-hmm. the timing is just bad somebody's going to be in it yep. right and it's going to suck a lot <laughs> for both parties but you better just talk through it mm-hmm. you know yeah because um, it's going to happen yeah so that's if we right. all stress about it and that's this business if you don't learn a way to mentally stabilize yourself then you definitely you know you're going to be gonna riding be that roller coaster every day every <laughs> single day Shoo. well michelle it's been a pleasure Thank you for well, coming on you. our, this our podcast. Fun. No, thank you so much for being a yeah. part no. of it. And, it's an um, honor. Our, our support for you is is unwavering. We love the, your leadership in this city, in this market. Um, you know, it's a, it's a testament to your business and, and how well you, you've performed over the last 22 years. So congratulations on thank all of you. your success. Absolutely. Thank you for being a part of it and letting us uh, 
share your story a little bit more. So. Thanks for having me over. Absolutely. Yeah, thank I you. Appreciate it. Awesome. All right. All right. Thanks for listening to the Cincinnati Real Producers podcast powered by Nextdoor Photos. We do this every week, so be sure to subscribe so you can follow along. If you liked our conversation, leave us a review. We'd love to hear your thoughts.